A king. <laughs> hey. Catch this rhythm. You feel that? That's called playerism. I'm on the scene, a player clean, poker face, four queens, I got four of a kind on everything. Diggas, living elite, I don't feel complete without kicking at my feet in a Rolls Royce every week. Maybe this is deep, listen close when I speak, I need to at least, cause I'm too much, got two nuts and give zero fucks. I've been player too long for you to tell me having two women is too wrong, the way I get my groove on, if I can't have two, then I gotta move on, even my car is too toned. So when I roam, I gotta bring two home. Quit banging my line, ho. Quit banging my line, ho. When you see me act like you don't need See me act like you don't even know me, ho. Understand what we're doing here. Like William, for example, was at the last conference. Random. Come on, baby, get a clue. How you do what you do? How do you fall in love with me? But I'm not in love with you. Peace to the saints. Peace to the saints. Oh, pish posh. It's a tragedy, darling. The queen is dead. The queen is dead. <laughs> oh, it's a tragedy. There's only one person that ain't uh that is not mourning right now. I think we all know who that is. It's Prince Charles, or shall we say, King Charles. Here we go. <clears throat> we are talking about the latest in news, which is the death of the monarch, Queen Elizabeth II. Brought to you by His Majesty Marquette de Von Burton, the first of his name, the warrior king, the Duke of many things, mayor of Las Vegas, St. City. You dig? The big homie, the one and only, Attila the Hunt, Fax Kellerman, Stephen, hey, PM. Yeah, you know who? The Duke of Windsor. <laughs> George sent a cash app. He said, Saint, you're on it right now. Peace to the saints. Peace to the saints. And in a real way, we establish in a monarchy. Matter of fact, an, um, uh, an empire globally. Because hell, if she can do it being as ugly as she was, I why can't I? What? What? Was she, did she look good when she was young? Did she look good? I, we're not here to mock her though. I am carrying on. Now, uh, number one, we should ask ourselves. Well, we're going to talk about the news. We're going to get into the news. We're going to get into the news. But there are a couple of questions in this educational lecture that you should pay attention to. Uh, number one, where do monarchs get their power in general? Number two, how did the British monarch monarchy become wealthy? How did it come into existence? Why has it persisted? What would happen if it were to end? These are all critical questions we will answer during the context of this uh, lecture. Uh, firstly, let us handle the obvious work of the news, darling. Darling, we're the tea and crumpets, darling. <laughs> and usually I wouldn't be so uh, foul about British culture, but I just got back from London and I was tremendously underwhelmed. When I start my empire, I will definitely be taking that bitch over immediately, expeditiously. Now. Queen Elizabeth II, the longest serving British monarch, has died at 96. She surely did have a long run. I just got off the phone with uh, Prince Charles and he was like, God damn, she just wouldn't go. I had to do it. This man that put something in her oatmeal and her Metamucil. <laughs> this man that put some, uh, some stuff in her Metamucil. <laughs> you know what Metamucil is? I don't even know exactly what it is. I just know old people drink Metamucil. <laughs> She smelled like cotton balls. But anyways, carrying on. Uh, number one. Yes, as someone said, R.I.P. Elizabeth. Yes, indeed. Rest in peace. Uh, Queen Elizabeth II, the longest serving monarch, has died at age 96. She was up there. Now, one thing we got to shout out is the monarchs always have style. She's a very stylish old bird. I imagine she probably had a stylist. <clears throat> Queen Elizabeth II served seven decades on the throne. Good Lord. And it's called the United Kingdom because it's a king what kingdom but there was no king this is curious there was a queen anyways 
if I were them, I'd be happy to finally get a king so we can have the name ring true for once. You dig? And also, I just feel like it's more powerful when there's a king. Do we not all feel that way? Are we not all agreed? Somebody put disrespectful. Absolutely. That's extremely accurate. Carrying on. Thanks for your carry on, Jamal's in the cash app. He said, definitely need a part two on the lecture from earlier. We'll see if folks uh, support it. I, I'm, you know, I'm really, I need to stop talking about doing the right things and just do them. You know, the lecture earlier I did was on, um, Miss uh, Elizabeth Holmes, the founder of uh, Theranos, which was basically a billion dollar fraud perpetrated by a woman who benefited from white female privilege. It is a fascinating story. Uh, carrying on with Queen Elizabeth, and thank you for sending in that support. I will consider that uh, part two. It says that the queen died peacefully. <laughs> okay. I mean, it, it kills me when I read articles and they state things that are completely just superfluous and unnecessary she died peacefully darling she was just sitting there watching a cricket game on the telly and she died peacefully one moment i was talking to her i looked away then i looked back and she was just gone poof she must have died peacefully i mean you die you die right i mean she obviously wasn't under duress she wasn't in a war zone yeah she died peacefully thank you whoop de doo anyways it was thursday afternoon at Balmoral Castle, her estate in the Scottish Highlands, the royal family uh, officially announced. Her son, Charles, age 73, he's an old boy, is now king. Officials said he remains at Balmoral and will return to London on Friday. Now, one thing you might not be aware of if you are outside of the UK is that uh, Charles is not very popular. But at the end of the day, to be a monarch, you don't have to be popular. It's not like you're Joe Biden, where eventually you'll get replaced, potentially impeached or, you know, things like that. You're pretty much going to stick around no matter what. And I do take issue with that, to be honest with you. Armand said, love how the lives often hit the second I get off work. I mm. cracked a London chick out in Vegas for my first time the other week, by the way. Thank you for the timeless game as always. Peace to the saints. Peace to the saints. And, and those British chicks, one thing I will say about them is they are very giving, if you know what I mean, in a real way. Mad Poet sent a super sticker. Shout out to Mad Poet supporting the work. Shout out to all the folks in the family who should support the work. Peace to the saints. Oh, my goodness. Quote, the death of my beloved mother, Her Majesty the Queen, is a moment of the greatest sadness for me and all the members of my family, Charles said in a statement. Well, number one, I do want to remind you all that family is extremely important. The royals give us a great example of this. That is why we are building family within the SAS, and that's also why we teach of how to maintain family. We teach of the basics that allow you to you know, thrive. Family is the original firm, which is to say in a capitalist system, family is the first economic unit, not the individual, but the family. A lot of immigrants into America example this. They utilize their family to pool resources and make uh, economic gains. So family is very important. One thing I will say is it's quite strange when a 96-year-old woman passes away and it's the greatest source of sadness. Is it really? Because I'm pretty sure we all had a timer set on our watch for her to uh, get up out of here. We pretty much knew she was on our way out, right? I mean, this is not a great source of sadness. And Charles, let us be real. You're celebrating my, my boy, and I can't blame you. I would have been like, God damn, I'm 73. I wanted to be a young king. Shoot, I'm over here drinking Metamucil and wearing Pampers right now. Quote, we mourn profoundly the passing of a cherished sovereign and a much-loved mother. I know her loss will be deeply felt throughout the country, the realms, and the commonwealth, and by countless people around the world. Uh, this stuff is hogwash. It, number one, I highly doubt that he wrote this. I'd be curious as to if he even had the decency to write his statement about his mother's death. I'm going to bet my bottom dollar he didn't write this. Uh, furthermore, I find it to be quite comical. They're talking about the realms. Damn, what is this, Harry Potter? The realms. They're, they, what is this, uh, Game of Thrones out here? They tripping. And furthermore, is it going to be mourned by countless people around the world? Because last I checked, countless people around the world don't give a shit about the monarch in uh, the UK. In fact, when I was just in London, there was a Pakistani taxi driver was talking greasy about the, the queen. I damn near thought he wanted to catch the pay with her. Um, so you have people who are actually in the UK who don't appreciate 
the queen, the monarch, or even the UK for all that matter. Is all he did was complain. It was weird. I was like, you're Pakistani. You left Pakistan to come to the UK for opportunity. You got the opportunity, and now you're just here complaining. I'm perplexed. Uh, next time I start up a country or take one over, you don't need to be happy to be there. You dig? We need to export a good number of Americans, especially the ones who are like, if Trump gets elected, I'm moving out. They ain't moved out. I need them gone. You dig? Carrying on. Said tuition, grateful for all the new content that I'm looking forward to catching up on later. Peace to the Saints. Peace to the Saints. One thing we often don't mention about the British monarch is that this was essentially the source of colonialism. You know, if you're Indian uh, and your country was taken over, or you're any of the other uh, English speaking countries, or shall we say Anglophone countries, your country was violently taken over by the British monarchy, essentially. That empire that used to exist. I remember when I was in high school, my history teacher, I said, so the, 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 the Great Britain, and he said, oh, no, don't call it Great Britain. Great is an opinion. It's just Britain now. I was like, whoa, you're foul. But yeah, let us not forget that um, these are the colonial masters. These are the people who went around the world, robbed, stealing, killing, and murdering to enhance their wealth. That's the foundation of their wealth. And here's the funny thing. You look on YouTube and you type in like, what's the source of the British monarchy's wealth? And it pretty much won't tell you the truth, which is uh, murder. Uh, carrying on. Now, Elizabeth had been placed under medical supervision earlier Thursday, officials say. I mean, let's be real. She's always been under medical supervision for like the last 20 years. She's up in age, right? Quote, following further evaluations this morning, the queen's doctors are concerned for her majesty's health and have recommended she remain under medical supervision. The palace had said in a statement, damn, the palace makes statements? The palace, like the building is making statements. Okay. Other members, why are they even writing about this in, in detail? She did. Here's a summary. She did. What she die of? Old age. She 96. Ain't nobody living that long. I mean, come on now. Quote, Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II embodied the British nation's continuity and unity over the past 70 years. Now, I think that's quite a fascinating statement for a number of reasons. This was said by uh, uh, the president of France, Macron, uh, whom I'm not a fan of for a variety of reasons. But number one, when he speaks of continuity, what you're really talking about is a an ethnicity. And Really, the monarchy is not representing what it did in the past. I mean, just imagine they have a girl in there who's half black, half white. What kind of continuity is that? I mean, continuity, not only is she half black, half white, isn't she American born? Yeah. yeah and generally speaking, I'm not suggesting that the monarchs of Europe have not uh, intermarried with one another or Europeans from different European countries, but the girl's American born, which is not European. And secondly, she has black blood. Uh, which is, you know, no disrespect. It's a beautiful thing. You dig. I tend to think it's the best blood. But aside from that, I mean, they're, they're, that's not continuity. Clearly, they've taken a step far afield of tradition. But anyways, he says all these nice words. And that's what you generally hear when someone passes away. People have all these nice pleasantries to share, most of which are empty words that don't mean a goddamn thing. He continues, quote, I remember her as a friend of France, a kind hearted queen. Oh, wait, actually, it's French. I'm sorry. Let me fix my accent. Quote, I remember her as a friend of France, a kind-hearted queen who has left a lasting impression on her country and her century, end quote. Now, this is complete idiocy because I can't think of one meaningful thing that the queen has done that I know of other than just be born into privilege, be hella rich, and every now and then dole out a little bit of money to the dumb fucks who allow her to stay in power. Uh, last I checked, she has no real remarkable abilities or talents. Wasn't good looking as a young lady. I'm just throwing that out there shit because I feel like if you're a monarch, the idea is that you rule by divine right, which is God given. God couldn't have given you a better face so that we can at least look up to you at some level. I I'm just saying, I don't think God creates ugly. That's my personal opinion. Hey, 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 it just is what it is. Anyways, um, so uh, she's worth about 500 million. That's just her. That's not counting certain things like uh, Buckingham Palace. You feel me? Which has to be worth something, right? That's just her personal asset. She's worth 500 million. She's the richest of the royals. And then you got all your family members who are also worth hundreds of millions. And it all came from the blood of mostly colored people in other countries that you considered inferior. And it just is what it is. I'm keeping it real out here. Can we do that one time? And so when we're talking about her, like she's an exceptional person, she is not. In fact, I charge that she's an average person. Her approval rating was at 68%. How the hell is your approval rating so goddamn low when your job is not to do anything but to look royal? And you ain't even good at that. 
come on now. Uh, outside of Buckingham Palace in London, hundreds of mourners gap. What the hell are y'all mourning? What are y'all? Y'all should have mourned the British monarchy a long time ago because the shit didn't end it. As soon as you didn't let an American and a half black in, it's, it's ended. It's ended. It's ended. Blank, was that Harry, the one that's balding? William, his name is William. It would make sense that his name wouldn't be Harry if he's balding. That would be an oxymoron. But William, I mean, he didn't got a black chick in from America. No, William doesn't have a black chick. The balding one does not have a black chick. Okay, he the one that married the black girl. Harry, the redhead, married the black girl. Why are you confusing me right now? Because you said the balding one married a black girl. You're supposed to be like Siri over here. You didn't provide me with some faulty information. Hey, I told you I'm a monarch now. Don't have me have the guards come in here, roll you up out of here. Hey, just keep playing with me. The guard's going to come roll your ass up out of here. Harry, the redhead, is married to the black girl. The redhead boy is married to the black girl. Yes. Okay. I'm just trying to imagine what happened when Harry, uh, the redhead kid, brought the, the black girl back. Like, yeah, this is my piece. I'm trying to bring her through. You heard me? I'm trying to marry her. You feel me? I, I, I imagine when she they, he brought her to dinner, they're like, oh, my gosh. Is it a Negro? Darling, darling, look over. Is that a Negro? He's brought a Negro to the palace. I am appalled. I, I can just only imagine. I mean, you know they had to be talking greasy behind his back. Am I wrong? Because I'm talking greasy behind his back and I'm black. I mean, I, they had to be going yay, yay. Anyways, and just side note, if you're going to bring a black girl into the British royal family, at least pick a smart one. If this isn't the dingiest, dim-witted, ding, ding bat, I want to just go with the alliteration. You got another D word? Anyways, this girl is a fool. She even got a podcast. What is somebody in the royal family doing with a podcast? Why is she trying to get on my line? Well, I'm going to get on her line. This is the Emperor Quet. You dig? I'm getting on her line since she want to get on my line. Good Lord. Anyways, in recent years, the queen had taken on a few public duties. Oh, really? Okay. Occasionally, can occasionally canceling appearances in which her attendance was once traditional. Mobility issues. Now, one thing I want to know is like, why is it when people start drinking Metamucil, wearing pampers and missing teeth, why don't we go ahead and retire them? Because they don't know when to retire. Go ahead, get George, uh, Joe Biden, get Joe Biden and the queen and set their ass to the side. You heard me? Good Lord. Carrying on. Anyway, she can't even show up because she can't walk. I'm talking about mobility issues. They trying to be nice. I feel like when I'm in the news, they're going to vilify me and fry me. I hope they write all these nice ass uh, euphemistic words talking about she had mobility issues. You mean she can't walk? God. <laughs> okay, the queen can't walk. <laughs> That's what I like about African-Americans. We have a saying. It's called make it plain. Um, anyways, mobility issues had troubled her in recent months. And, and I can't blame her. She's 96, right? Uh, I mean, Lizzo can barely walk, right? Lizzo is young. You feel me? Lizzo, ain't that the fat black girl who sing R&B? She can't walk. Um, yeah. Justin sent a cash off and said, divine rulers being unattractive, how sway? Yeah, and how sway? That's what I'm trying to say. You over here trying to interrupt me like I'm wrong. People in the comments also said, guard, seize her! Guard, seize her! I'm talking about my people. Keep playing with me. Are you, you British? A hundred percent? Fifty percent. That's what's up. That's what's up. Anyways, mobility issues troubled her in recent months, and she had taken to spending much of her time at Windsor Castle. That's not a bad place to be, you know, hold up at. The family's country estate near London at Balmoral, the castle in Scotland. These fools got castles upon castles. Can they slide your boy a little something? In February, she contracted COVID. Uh, and was very tired and exhausted. See, this would get me mad. You know, COVID is a scam if it couldn't take her out. If she 90 something, COVID couldn't get her. How is going to get the big homie? Why you got me on the plane wearing masks? And I'm really talking about Condor Airlines. Yes, you. Somebody tweet this at them. I hope they stock price decline rapidly. We Go ahead. Another cash out for tuition. Shout out to the Saints uh, supporting the work. In June, Elizabeth appeared at her Platinum Jubilee celebrating her 70 years on the throne. It's like, damn, she's celebrating herself. That's great. <laughs> the arrogance. I'm going to celebrate myself. I've been on the throne doing not a damn thing. I haven't expanded the empire. I haven't improved uh, uh, democracy, haven't improved our reputation internationally. I've not improved the economy. The British pound is sinking. Uh, we have a diverse nation of people who don't even care about British history. I've done nothing, but let's celebrate anyways. Mackins also 
said, no, Marquette, that girl light, bright, half a shade from white. Oh, no. LOL, if I did not know who Megan was, I would think she was a white oh, girl with man. a tan. Peace to the Saints. Oh, wow. He fell out here. Peace to the Saints. Now, I can tell you, I got an eye for race. I, I can look at somebody and assess their background really well. You remember we, when we were um at the Rolls Royce dealership and, uh, oh, boy, I was like, you're from, I don't even remember what country it was. It's some random ass little country in Eastern Europe. I was like, bro, you, you from Albania. He was like, I am. You feel me? I got an eye for it. Right. There's another redhead uh, woman at uh, Caesar's Palace. She's literally a redhead. I was like, you African-American. She's like, I am. Nobody knows. I'm like, no, shorty, I see you. You heard me now. That's divine right there. Man, get my throne prepared. We about to have a coronation. Caleb sent a cash app with tuition. Shout out to Caleb. Shout out to the real ones. Shout out to the prosperous ones. Watching the parade from the balcony of Bucking. They didn't do a parade for this broad? Who didn't show it up? Did they pay people to show up? What the hell were they celebrating? What has she done? Oh, my goodness. Anyways, it says she missed out on most of the other festivities. So you celebrating her, but she too old to even pull up to her own party? Come on now. Y'all need to knock it off with this stuff. I am voting personally for, and I know there's not a vote, but if there was, I'm voting. And I know if there was a vote, an American couldn't vote in it, but all the same, I'm voting for the end of the monarchy. I really am. I really am. Elizabeth exceeded. That's a new word for your boy. Exceeded. She didn't exceeded to the throne on February 6, 1952. That's a while. She older than my Rolls Royce and it's an antique anyways. And that's when she started. That ain't even when she was born. Lord, over her 70 year long reign. Is it a reign if you ain't bossing up, though? Is it really a reign or is you just in? It's, she's a figurehead carrying on. Born in 1926. Just 1926. Yeah. Dang. She didn't seen everything. She didn't met. Uh, she didn't seen World War II. She didn't seen before radios existed. She didn't seen before cement existed. She didn't seen everything. Somebody told me she helped write the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> Carrying on. Look, um, she oversaw an extraordinary period of British history, including decolonization. OK, but did they give the money back when they decolonized, though? Did they? I'm just trying to find out. Uh, and the independence of more than 20 countries. I like how they try to paint it so nice. She oversaw decolonization. Did she oversee decolonization as though she organized it or did some of those nations rise up? Because history reminds me that they rose up. History reminds me of a number of names of people who said we are throwing off the yoke of colonialism. She did not oversee that, you lying dirtbag. This is NPR I'm reading from. Send them a, a, a dick pic from the big homie. Carrying on. Anyways. Um, 15 British prime ministers came and went during her reign, along with 14 U.S. presidents. Oh, there you go. Adam sent a catch up. He said, peace to the saints, paying tuition, big homie. Peace to the saints. Let's see what else is, is said about the uh, demise of her. Notice um, all this great stuff about her jubilee and, you know, her being a great monarch and reigning for a long time. Did the article name one specific benefit that anyone received direct from the hands of Queen Elizabeth II? Now deceased. I, I don't recall that being identified. Let us read another article. Perhaps we might learn something. And one thing I'm going to say is that her house is cold. You know, shout out to her interior designer. You feel me? The, the palaces are cold in a real way. Um, the death of Queen Elizabeth II, which Buckingham Palace announced on Thursday, is a watershed moment for Britain. Watershed. I really like that word. It doesn't sound like it really matches anywhere, but it's a cool word. Um, it marks both the loss of a reverend monarch, the only one most Britons have ever known, and the end of a figure who served as a living link to the glories of World War II Britain. That is so stupid. Like, who wants to be connected to World War II, especially if you're British? Let me give you guys a history lesson real quick. If you're British, you were getting your ass kicked in World War II, just in case you forgot and you didn't know. I, I specialize in World War II. You were getting your ass kicked in World War II. Winston Churchill was begging America, my country, the greatest country in the world, he was begging our country to intervene because Addy, as they call him, I don't want to say his name. I don't know if that's going to get me flagged, but, you know, the German boy with the mustache talking about all that, you know, that guy. Yeah, he was whooping y'all asses. And uh, Churchill was begging America to enter the war. And we were also sending him weapons, munitions, spare parts, all that good stuff. It wasn't enough. They needed our help, which is to say y'all would have been down bad if we didn't get in there. So 
no British person wants to remember World War II. If you didn't know, that's when the UK itself was being aerially bombarded by the German menace. And it got so bad, if you didn't recall, I'm going to remind you, um, you had Winston Churchill, who was one of the best orators in the world. He's like, we shall fight on the beaches. We shall fight on the shores. We shall fight in the cities. We shall fight evermore. We shall defend our tiny island. Come death or high water. We will never give up. Blah, 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 blah. You feel me? So he is basically saying that we're going to fight to the last life. You down bad when you got to tell your population that story. That's a story of basically saying, hey, look, man, it ain't looking good. Hey, but we're going to ride this one out. Nah, uh, it was not a pleasant time. This person who wrote this article is a fucking idiot. They're from the New York Times. Send them a picture of my middle finger carrying on. Just the idiocy of average people just boggles the mind. I hate middle management. Goodness, Lord. You know, the burden of intelligence, excuse me, the privilege of intelligence is balanced by the burden of dealing with the unintelligent. That's a direct quote from the big homie. Oh, they ain't supporting? Let me carry on and give this charity. Let me give this charity. Reaction to the queen's death from world leaders poured in. <laughs> okay. I don't know why they keep announcing the the French uh, guy first. I don't know if he just like got out and like said his stuff immediately. He was really quick on the draw. And you have the Italian prime minister, Mario Draghi, express, quote, deep grief. This guy's an idiot. You should be in deep grief that your country is considered one of the pigs in Europe. P-I-G-S. Pigs. Portugal, Italy, Greece, Spain. Which is to say the European countries that are run by imbeciles who have run their economy into the ground. Pigs. Italy will have a weaker economy than uh, Nigeria very soon. You're a pig. You need to work on your economy instead of giving condolences to countries that don't have anything to do with you today. Oh, it kept going hard and wild and at the same time. Saint said she helped write the Bible. It's foul out here. Anyways, last day some hand wraps arrived today. Peace to the saints. Peace to the saints. Shout out to the real ones who get those exclusive products. The hand wraps are no more. They're sold out. They're sold out. The backpack briefcases are no more. They're sold out. Yes. Shout out to the ballers who got them. I don't have the exact number. We're down with less than eight running belts. Oh, yeah, and we got eight running belts. There you go. The death of Queen Elizabeth II sets in motion meticulous, meticulously choreographed and coordinated. Come on, man. Just say it sets in motion a progress, uh, a process for which the palace, the government, the news media, the local authorities, and the queen have long planned. Basically, they say they knew she was on her way out. Hey, I knew it too. Um, amid the public mourning uh, nat and national memorializing known as Operation London Bridge, blah, blah, blah. They're going to have a big-ass expensive funeral. The, the moral of the story is they're about to spend a tremendous amount of money to bury this woman instead of just tossing her old ass in a casket and, you know, put it. what did the Vikings do? They just put your ass on, on the water on a raft, burn that motherfucker and push it out. <laughs> like, you good. <laughs> yeah, that's what they should do because there's no sense in spending $150 million to bury someone. That's just foolish. And this has historically been the pattern of the royal monarchy, which shows you how little they care for the people. The last royal wedding was about 50 million. The one of Princess Diana was about 150 million in today's dollars. Could that money be used more intelligently, perhaps for the subjects? Yeah, for sure. But the subjects are fucking idiots. And that's why they allow this kind of stuff to carry on. Armand is back. He said that privilege of intelligence, quote, should be a canvas piece. I'd cop it. Mm. I need that sass and chain joint, too. In a real way, the chain coming soon. And you know what? That's that's a good point. You think we should put that joint on the canvas? I like that. That'd be too, Is that too ruthless to hang up in the house, though? <laughs> you can hang up wherever you want. Uh, our guest going to come in like, this man is an animal. Lee said, did we forget colonialism? Peace to the saints. Oh, I ain't forgot it, bro. I've been talking up on it. But them uh those British knob slobbers then forgot about it. And you know me, I'm I'm in a unique position because I have a lot of respect for the British heritage. Um and it, and Britain is in a, a state today similar to America where no one respects the heritage. They don't know the history. They don't respect the heritage. They allow people to come into their country who are not contributing to the country. They're just there to suck out for their own benefit. Same thing is true in America. Go ahead and take this moment to get them likes up.
You caught up? Fantastic. So Buckingham Palace released a statement from Charles paying his tribute to his beloved mother, Her Majesty the Queen. Bisto just sent tuition. He said Big Homie's chain game is crazy. Also hoping the black backpack briefcase drops. You know, we we might have to we might have to see what's up. You know, it is it is a beauty. I'm making one final modification to it because, you know, we live in like James Bond out here. I'm about to throw a holster on the inside of it, you know. So you, when you reach in there, you can easily grab the clapper in case somebody need an attitude adjustment. So once we get that holster in there, uh, we might consider putting it out. So we might do it for a pre-sale. If we list a pre-sale, maybe we'll do 100 units on the pre-sale. Yeah, and if if we get 100 units, then then we'll put it out. If not, we won't put it out. Quote, during this period of mourning and change, really, bro, there's change? I mean, there, there's a change of monarchs, but you're just a figurehead. You're really just a rich-ass family now. Like, you don't rule anything. You're just a rich-ass family that has undue influence on British society and British politics. That's all you are. There's no real change occurring. But anyways, back to his quote. Quote, during this period of mourning and change, my family and I will be comforted and sustained by our knowledge of the respect and deep affection in which the queen was so widely held that's not true she only had a 68 percent approval rating i mean the ruthless shit i didn't said in this youtube video i probably got a 68 percent approval rating and i didn't damn near offended everybody i mean come on 68 percent, and your only job is to be rich and look good and you can't do that right that's ludicrous she's screwing up so when you state that there is a deep affection Use a goddamn fool. Y'all, y'all people are deeply disconnected from the populace. Quote, President Joe Biden canceled planned remarks on his new COVID vaccine. Like, good, bro, you ain't going to give up on that. As I said earlier, COVID couldn't take Shorty out and she was 94. We don't need it. We don't need it. We don't want it. Carry on, my boy. Do something useful, Biden. Man. Anyway, so he canceled his remarks to take a moment for the queen's death. Okay, cool. Carrying on. Is there anything else uh, meaningful about her death before we get into some real uh, knowledge? Okay, so here's a question. Will, will Charles become King Charles? King Charlie? Well, not necessarily. When Charles succeeds his mother as the monarch, there is a chance that he may not become King Charles III. Is Charles his first name or his last name? Oh, that's curious. Uh, and it's not unusual for royals to take another name when they ascend the throne. Maybe he'll choose uh, King Marquette. He is free to choose his own regnal title and may select another for his full given name, Charles Philip Arthur George. Philip Arthur George, that boy got a lot of names. He liked the Latinos. Or choose, what, am I wrong? I had a homie, his name is Juan Esteban, Martin, Juan, Juan Esteban Martinez, and I can't remember the other three. I just only ever caught the, the first three when he used to say it. Uh, but shout out to my Catholics, Jeremy. You know I they always got two first names. Shout out to my Southerners. They always got two first names. Billy, Billy Joe, get in the house. Anyways, the queen's own father, whose given name was Albert, chose to be crowned King George the fourth in 1936 when he took the throne. I'm sorry, my Roman numeral game is weak. You're, I had to pause like, damn, man. What is, uh, or, no, that's the six, King George the six. Oh, help a brother out. Yikes. Can people stop tweeting? I don't like that tweeting is an official means of communication by a head of state. I mean, what is that about? It says uh, crowds outside Buckingham Palace swelled the evening before the news of the queen's death broke this evening huh after a hush people here broke into god save the queen god can't save the queen y'all better quit singing that they singing god god save the queen god can't save her it's too late quit singing we're gonna need a remix <laughs> god bury the queen <laughs> hurry up uh because god can't save the queen y'all should have been singing that earlier y'all late see that's the problem with people they be late as hell god save the queen give me a break carrying on they got some nice photos of the old bird. I like to see her in black and white. She looked good in black and white. Not good, but better than she usually be looking. All righty. Like Carson just booked a consultation. I'm not sure if it's with Mark or Seth. But. Shout out to Carson. You know, shout out to those who are investing in themselves. 
Okay, so that's pretty much all anyone had to say about the queen. And I would hope that if I were to pass uh, pass away, that the news media would be able to speak to my merits. I can't say that I identified one meaningful thing that was stated about her. And I just read two news articles. They didn't say she did fill in the blank for the people. It's like she lived an unprofitable life. Well, I shouldn't say unprofitable. She made hella profit, but she didn't do anything for anybody. Okay. It get like that. What can you do? It gets like that. Jackie Peebles, age 48, struggled to hold back tears as she spoke about the first time she waved to the queen on the Royal Yacht in Jersey at age 10. Is this girl a goddamn idiot? That's the problem with average people. And I used to think, you know, well of average people and think, you know what? I want everyone to be able to live well. I want everybody to eat. Nah, nah, I think I'm good. I think I'm good. And this is another reason I don't believe in universal health care because, eh, some people, they make foolish decisions. If you want to smoke cigarettes, why should I pay to keep you alive? You don't even want to keep you alive. Wouldn't make sense for me to pay to do it. And that's the brain dead nature of the average person I met in London. You guys in America, you have guns. What would you rather have? Guns or free health care? Nah, I'll take my guns. But here's the logical issue that you're having. Guns and free health care have nothing to do with one another. We could actually have both. And my country is actually wealthy enough to have both. But the reason we don't have free health care is because the wicked politicians in America would rather sp spend that money on the opposite of health care. Health care is to save and maintain life. They'd rather spend it on taking life, mostly abroad, namely in countries like Afghanistan, Iraq, Syria, etc. You know, but the British folks on average are fucking brain dead. I mean, I'm just keeping it real. I'm not saying the Americans are any smarter, but at least they're a little more free. You know what I'm saying? Like the British people, I was shocked. They actually believe what the government says. At least in America, we be scratching our head like, oh, for real, Biden? For real, though, bro? No, nah, we ain't buying it. Even when Trump was like, build that wall. We're like, nigga, you ain't about to build no wall, man. Quit playing, bro. It's your orange cheetah looking at. You know, we wouldn't taking him seriously, but the British really be believing in the lies that their government says. It was, it was just astounding. The anxiety over the Queen's health comes at an already fraught time for Britain as a cost of living crisis. And London was exceptionally expensive. I'll say of all of these cities I've been to in uh, the, the European uh, side of the world, uh, Switzerland and London. Switzerland is not a city. Uh, Zurich and London were the two most expensive cities by far. Cost of living crisis and fears of skyrocketing energy costs have gripped the nation, leaving many struggling to get by. Oh, well, let me give you a funny story, British people. Yo ass is struggling right now. Watch these motherfuckers spend $150 million to bury this old broad. Watch it and think about how much they care about your dumb ass. Not at all. Not at all. And I do mean that. Here's another quote from an imbecile. Rita Grant, age 64, a worker at a children's center in London. Obviously, she's an imbecile, as evidenced by her job, uh, said that it was a difficult situation in Brit that Britain was going through with a cost of blah, 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 blah. Quote, she is the glue that holds everything together. If we lose her, we lose a lot. She's the glue that holds everything together. But I just read two whole articles and they didn't identify one meaningful outcome that she's driven in 70 years of reigning. What are we talking about? Gilkin said, where could I get the I identify as a white girl shirt? And that should have been worn this morning. Yeah. So there, there's two places you can get it. You can get uh, one version from mdblabel.com. And there's another version we have on our second uh, merch website, which I will Get you the link to that one right now, Saint. I put mdblabel.com in the chat. Cool. You caught up there? I am. Fantastic. Somebody told me they didn't have the likes up. Somebody told me people weren't hitting that like button. And by the way, thank you to those who uh, subscribe at patreon.com slash the Saint in the Center. Uh, thank you to those who send in tuition, which is uh, very respectable. And, um, you know, shout out to those who are watching and don't even click the like button and have hatred in your hearts. Shout out to you too. And to the Instagram subscribers, we may have a fun meal that we're cooking for them tonight. Oh, you know what they told me? Because we did an Instagram live. Uh, we cooked uh, Jiro's from scratch and they said I didn't get enough of the process. So they said, I need to set that camera up and just let you go through that whole home cooked process. We're, we're doing jerk chicken. Jerk chicken. Homemade sauce and all. You know what I like about the jerk chicken? 
It's very appropriate because tomorrow I'm going to be smoking a big blunt. We're going to be smoking the Ack Pack DJ Academics. DJ Fat Academics. We're going to be smoking a big blunt of that Ack Pack tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen. So if you want to make some jerk chicken or learn how to make it, you can subscribe on Instagram.com. Yeah, jerk chicken is delicious, by the way, just in case you didn't know. Jerk chicken is my favorite. It's often a little bit too spicy for me, but you know, sometimes you just got to take that L. Here's the link to the I identify as a white woman uh, sweatshirt. Go ahead and uh, hit that like button so we can continue with this uh, education. Um, Just by the way, uh, I was kind of wondering, I was like, is the queen single? Like where her man at? Just in case you didn't know, I just want to give you a little bit of backstory. Uh, Prince Philip was her husband and he met his demise uh, a while ago. Um, so she wasn't single. Obviously, she had children. She did have a husband. He just happened to pass away before her, which is typical. Men usually die before women. But I will remind you that men who are married tend to live longer than men who are unmarried. Sorry, I has a question in the comments. I don't see it yet. Yeah, we'll wait for that to pop up. Now, one thing I want to point out to you guys in terms of like, the importance of patriarchy. Like we got to stop playing games and pretending, right? Especially when we're talking about the British Royals, which means we're talking about the, the structure of monarchy, which is a traditional thing. You see the queen of what well, all the stuff she was the queen of, of the United Kingdom, what have you. When she married old boy, he was still a prince. You heard me? That didn't elevate him to a boss, which is to say a queen is so powerless. When she marries somebody, they, they still just old boy. But conversely, when a king marries someone, they are elevated in status. They become a queen, which is to let you know that men hold the power. And that is how it has been organized historically. And if indeed the concept of monarchy comes from God and you rule through divine right, that's how God wanted it. So if you are a believer in God, let you believe in that. Star said, see him being as relevant a year from now. So where would the man of spirit end up? Who? I don't know if he's talking about the roast guy. Yeah, you're roasting. I'm not sure who he's talking about. Yeah, I'm not sure who you're talking about right now, player. Um, write that sentence a little bit more completely uh, for us, and we'll address that. I just want to make sure that we answer the question that you're actually asking. So let us go on. By the way, I love all those damn names that the you know the royals have. That's really cool fly stuff. I love the names and, and the palaces. I got to get me one. You dig? Now, we are about to go through a little bit of history, which is critical for you to understand. The first question is, and we're going to answer a couple of questions for you. So question number one is, where in the hell did this British monarchy even come from? Like, who thought of this? Like, how did this come into existence? And then we're going to answer, how did they become so wealthy? Like, how wealthy are they today? And then number three, we're going to ask, well, what would happen if we didn't have a monarch in Britain? Do we really need one? Eh, probably not. Uh, so let's get into it. So question one is, how did the British royal family come to be? And low key, like the subtext is, how do we create our royal family? You dig? We got some work to do. David writes, the secret bank of Catholic church at the Vatican has that stolen riches to bury her. Mm. I believe she actually died a week ago, but certain rituals had to be performed for the next heir. Peace of the saints. I don't know, bro. Couldn't call it. I couldn't call it. Here we go. Let's get into this. So how did the British, the British, how they become royal? The British royal family is arguably the most famous dynasty in modern history, responsible for the unification of the United Kingdom, colonization of vast swathes of the pre-industrial world, and waging countless wars across the globe. Today, the British monarchy is mostly removed from directly governing the kingdom, operating more in a symbolic fashion while still enjoying the pomp, ceremony. Man, I got to give me an outfit like this. These boys be clean. I ain't even going to lie to you. These boys be clean out here. I do confirm that you can hear the audio quite well. ...and lavish lifestyle that comes with being born into royalty. So who came before? William, Kate, Meghan, and Harry. How did the British royal family come to be? Welcome to Brilliant Thinking, in me convoluted to say the least, with her family history dating back to the 10th century. 
Now, one thing I'm going to point out to you is that's really meaningful. Their family history dates back to the 10th century. We don't even usually reference time that far back. That is quite far. Now, whether they've actually maintained a real bloodline over time is a different thing, but it is quite important lineage and being able to track that. And the reason family historically has been so important is because it's easier to rely on blood than to rely on people's word or values, right? Which is to say, theoretically, your blood should not betray you. That's why when you have certain situations of people catching cases, you know, your buddies will, will drop the dime on you, snitch and rat. But theoretically, your brother, your sister, your mother, they're not going to rat on you. They're going to keep it solid, which is to say the old saying, blood is thicker than water. And so your family clan has always been your number one base for success. You have text me just bought the Coro Athletic shorts and oh, shout the out hat out. with the red. The corduroy one or the classic one? The classic one. Shout out. That's a beautiful piece. MDBlabel.com. I got that hat myself. Her ancestry can be traced back to Alfred the Great, King of Wessex, who lived between 849 and 899 AD. From then on, things get messed. Oh, did they show the goddamn Game of Thrones on here? This is out. They didn't went overboard. In true Game of Thrones style. During this time, aristocratic families would fight each other for control of the crown. But it wasn't just family feud. Constant bickering over rightful heirs meant that brothers and uncles would often kill each other in order to be the next king. This I want to point out a fact to all these softies on the planet Earth. You see, what the gentleman is describing is that everyone wants power. Turns out you got to fight to get it and you have to fight to maintain it. Factual. So don't think that we always have to be like, you know, kumbaya. It only becomes kumbaya and peaceful when one family or one government or one organization like the assassin is able to dominate all other organizations. So if you ever wonder why I'm out here chopping heads off and then sticking spikes on them and then putting them in my front yard is because that's how how it needs to be. Barbaric behavior continued for hundreds of years throughout the medieval period until the House of Hanover began its reign in 1714 marking the official start of the British royal family's reign. Now, we should mention just prior to this, England actually had an 11-year period of being a republic, following the execution of King Charles I in 1649. During this period, several attempts were made to form a stable government, all of which failed, with Scotland and Ireland refusing to recognize... Yeah, that's another thing that you guys might not understand. Scotland and Ireland basically are English-speaking people's... Uh, I guess they're not actually English speaking people. I mean, they speak English now, but they do have their own languages, but they're essentially a different people than the British or shall we say the English. Um, and they have been brought into the United Kingdom essentially by force. And those who are keen on this history are familiar with the IRA. Do you know about the IRA? Okay. Uh, basically, it's just like a revolutionary uh, force that's still alive and well today and is fighting the British essentially. Um, you don't have any Irish in you? I do a little bit. Okay. Yeah, because you're kind of a redhead, ain't you? you? Okay. Nice. The various interim governments, no less than three different political administrations, tried their hand at leading the Commonwealth. With a looming civil war and a very real threat of the Scottish invading Britain, Charles's son was returned from his exile in France to assume the throne in 1660. If you're not a massive royal fan, these next few facts might come as a bit of a shock. But the British royal family has had German roots way back to the origins of the throne. In fact, England has actually been ruled a number of times by a German family. And the term Anglo-Saxon refers to Germanic-speaking migrants that settled in Great Britain. I just want to clarify that a little bit because I spoke to this point earlier. <clears throat> Number one, Saxony, correct me if I'm wrong, Saxony is a place in Germany. And so he's correct when they say Anglo-Saxon, they're talking about those with the German roots. And he also notes that Britain was ruled by German families. And as I noted earlier, you have a lot of folks who in Europe, the aristocrats and the monarchs would intermarry, but it would be atypical for their, them to intermarry someone who is not from a royal family and is not from Europe. So the uh, half black girl that we have in in the family today would be completely atypical, a major departure from tradition. 
And tradition clearly is hugely important when you're talking about monarchy because all monarchy is based on is tradition. YouTube was suppressing Sorrow's comments. That's why I could not see it. So he did email it to me. Oh, wow. He said, where do you think this little master thing is going in the future? It got put on the map when that one Skittle guy died. And now everybody is looking up to Andrew Tate as the leader of it. Right. I don't see him being as relevant a year from now. So where would the manosphere end up? Which word do you think got it suppressed? The word manosphere? Yeah. He didn't say Skittle. He said another word. Oh, I see. So With the G? With the G. Okay. So you think, so it's either manosphere or that word with the G that yeah, got it suppressed? What about the Tate? I mean, are they blocking that word? Okay. I'm j I just need to write that down so we know what's getting suppressed. Did he put the full name of the gentleman or just his last name? Here's exactly what he wrote. Okay. He called it the G dude. <laughs> He's keeping it a buck, huh? He he typed the word manister. That chat showed up. So it's the Okay. The G word. Got you. Understood. And thank you to those who support the work. It does mean a lot. <coughs> I just want to acknowledge you. Did you want to answer that question? Yeah, sure. So the gentleman uh, sends in his question, where do you think this uh, manosphere thing is going in the future? I think that there is a cultural war right now. Not, I think I know that there is a cultural war going on at the moment. And the manosphere really is the idea of patriarchy. That's really the, the chief aim of the manosphere if it was organized enough to have an aim. And it will require a great leader. And so I do think the concept behind the driving force of the manosphere will continue, but it will be up against big tech and media. It'll need a leader who's clever. He writes, oh boy, who passed away recently, uh, put it on the map. This is true. Well, I think he made it more familiar to the mainstream, but I think the mainstream was already familiar with the concept of red pill and red pill rage uh, more notably. And then the gentleman who recently got banned, he was never going to be uh, quite an effective leader of the Manosphere because as we saw when he was being interviewed on Fox News by Tucker Carlson, he couldn't really articulate very well. And I think that you're not going to win unless you can get crossover audience, which is to say the men are behind you, the heterosexual normal men are behind you. But the problem is that you also have to convince some of these these you know, soft boys, the soy boys who are kind of on the edge, you have to teach them a little bit and you can't do it without women. Women are half of the U S population. So you have to have the heterosexual women who have some intelligence and common sense. They also have to be able to latch onto your message. And I don't think his message was uh, universal enough because it was too, uh, it was not palatable. So I think it'll continue. It'll just need a better leader. And because it's a real issue, leaders will keep rising up and the struggle will continue. Who will win? We shall see. And he writes, uh, I don't see him being relevant a year from now. I, I don't even see him being relevant six months from now. He'll fade away pretty quickly. Rex said, I didn't even get a notification from YouTube that you were doing this live. Shaking my head. We do try to alert everyone on the member sites. Indeed. Um, I actually did this. We literally just posted this up as soon as we heard it. So we didn't even actually get to post it this time on the member sites, but 99, yeah, every time it's on the member sites, this time we just went live straight away. Uh, and thank you to those who have clicked the like button. Um, indeed, the likes are very low. Okay, Kevin sent a cash off. He said, Queen Elizabeth was ugly than a mother effort. Ah, and I'm disrespectful though, huh? And Adam sent a cash app and he said, Ack pack with a cigarette emoji and a smoke emoji. I'm telling you, we about to be smoking that ack pack. You heard me. We blowing it. Vibing out with T said, shout out to Bridget for pronouncing my name right. Texany Eric Rowley just bought those MDB items. Mm. Can you confirm these items get shipped to Toronto, Canada with a standard $6.99 US shipping? He bought them on mdblabel.com. Yeah, if he bought them on mdblabel.com, it automatically calculates your shipping cost. Is that correct? There we go. So whatever you paid is all you will pay. Uh, so thank you for uh, confirming that. And thank you for supporting uh, you know, our, our work. And you got some high quality products coming your way. Sara believes the, the word D that starts with D. What happened? Oh, Could have really? Been suppression? Interesting. Okay. 
very possible. Devin came in on Cash Shop. He said Marquette is a learned man indeed, A plus content. Learned. Thank you. <laughs> you making faces? Guards, behead her. Take her to the guillotine. Don't let me become the emperor. People going to be on their best behavior. You hear me? Added to this, Queen Victoria's mother was a German princess, while her husband, Prince Albert, was also of German royalty. Oh, Lord. Look, ugly running the family. Hold on. Here we go. Victoria's mother was a German princess. Hold on. While her husband. Look at this. Ugly runs in the family. The thing I find personally offensive, it's like, bruh, there's levels of spit and game. I'm just trying to imagine. I didn't ran up on the shorty. You heard me? I'm over here fly. I got on some royal stuff. You heard me? I'm dripped in a whole crazy way. Got on the velvet slippers. You dig? Might have a staff on me. Dripped in the jewels. I'm over here spitting this game out of like, look, shorty, you know I run a whole country, right? Look here. Nah, for real though. I run a whole country. I'm the Duke of Edinburgh. You heard me? Yeah, yeah. You don't even know what that is, but check this out. I'm going to need me a princess. You heard me? Might elevate you to a queen if you act right. How you got some game that you could kick like that and you end up with this piece? I'm about to enlarge it. What? Where they do that at? Bro, you could have had anything and you didn't got that? I'm mad. Matter of fact, put a wig on him. I think I'd rather take him. Down bad. Go ahead. McIndall is back. He said, I read something that the quote unquote queen, the late husband, was actually a distant uncle. Peace to the saints. Ooh, yikes. I wouldn't be surprised. Prince Albert was also of German royalty. The current dynasty, Windsor House, actually used to be called Saxe Coburg and Gotha, but it was changed in 1917 due to anti German sentiment throughout World War I. Now, oh, I want to point out how much they manipulate the commoners. You guys should understand that your governments care nothing about you. They don't care about commoners. In fact, the way the government thinks of themselves are like world citizens. Yes, world citizens, because they have the money to travel around the world. They got bank accounts in various countries. So they don't care about the country that they rule. They care about their own bank account, which happens to be distributed through different financial institutions throughout the planet Earth. Now, the reason I point that out <clears throat> is because they just noted that the British monarchy had a German word in the name of that monarchy. And then during the First World War, when they were at war with Germany, the British monarchy removed that German word so that it sounded nicer for the British population. That is called manipulation, ladies and gentlemen. And that has occurred more than once in history. As the gentleman said, I am indeed a learned man. And for that, let me provide you with a second example you might not have known of. Same thing happened in Russia. They used to have a major city called St. Petersburg. And if memory serves me correctly, and it might not feel free to correct me, I have no qualm being corrected, but they changed it from St. Petersburg to Petrograd, more Russian sounding. And why was it named St. Petersburg, something that might sound English or German? Well, that's because these monarchs all sleep around with each other. And while us commoners, we are so petty and we engage in racism and discrimination and hatred against one another, the Ukrainian people don't like the Russian people, not realizing that the leaders in those countries are friends with each other, not realizing that while they send the poor out to fight and murder each other in these wars, they're completely safe. Zelensky was just ringing the New York Stock Exchange bell. He completely safe doing unnecessary stuff. Putin is completely safe, but it's the Russian soldiers that ain't safe. It's the Russian and Ukrainian families that have to send their kids and their children to be hacked into pieces. And this occurs in America too. Consider the fact that Donald Trump never went into mili military service, went to a military boarding school didn't go to military service same thing with george bush these are people who don't want to fight in the wars they want to start them but don't want to fight in them a pity now to more recent history the turn of the 19th century was wild to say the least king george iii or the mad king as he was later nicknamed ruled from 1760 to 1820 although the last 10 years of his life was a descent into insanity with the popular ruler going blind, deaf, psychotic, and wallowing in excruciating pain. Hold on, man. There's something wrong with their genetics. Aren't they supposed to have divine genetics? This boy that went blind, deaf, and dumb, and crazy? What? That 
don't sound like divine genetics. I'm just saying, why is it in, in human life we have so much trouble when things are going wrong and there's a train wreck? We, we, we don't try to slow the train down or, or put it onto a new track. Like right now, America is a train. In fact, all of Western civilization is a train and is going in the wrong direction. The United Kingdom as a female prime minister, it's going in the wrong direction. America, half of our politicians can't stay awake and they can't put together a proper sentence. We have Joe Biden can't stay awake. We have uh, OAC. What's her name? You know what I'm talking about? The Latina chick. She got a long ass name. We can't even remember it. We got to use an acronym. OAC, COA. Whatever the hell her name is, she's an she's an imbecile, complete fool. Why are these folks in power? Huh. Kevin sent another cash app. He said, "DJ Ack roasted again. Christmas came early." Yes, sir. And Kevin is back again and said, "Elizabeth, ugly ass, must have oh. had some bomb ass pee." It's possible. It is possible. It don't don't count that out. Let, let consider me corrected, right? She probably has some other values. Carry on. Fast forward to 1837. Victoria became Queen of England at the age of 18 after her uncle, King William IV, died. The young queen is heavily credited with Britain's industrial, empirical, and economic expansion. Life for the British changed dramatically throughout her long reign. And with that change, so too did public perception of the royal family. Queen Victoria began to dang here we go again can we just see one bad beat just one lord and you know what this actually might be a British thing though because I'm not gonna lie to you when I was traveling in Europe I did notice that consistently when I would meet British chicks they were not fire actually they were the opposite of fire for sure so I, I do recall that yes indeed uh, go ahead and hit that like button in a real way. AOC, got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was I saying? AOC. I was saying AOC. Okay. Cool. Yeah, go ahead and bang that like button one time. Get back to this education. To emphasize the importance of family to the British people, showing off the ideal family that our subjects could look up to. The monarch would send out Christmas cards. Newspapers would publish the accomplishments of her nine children and her family would only be seen on their best behavior at royal events. As her children grew up, it was time for them to marry. She would play matchmaker and marry her children to the heirs of other European dynasties, a move that actually prevented a lot of wars. It would have... Just remind me, um, in my... One, I don't want rule by heredity, which is to say that just because your daddy was the ruler, you get to be the ruler lightning doesn't strike twice in the same place we often see when we have a great leader his son is usually an imbecile uh, there's a great example when george bush senior he was director of the cia his son wasn't that clever and then we had francois duvalier and then his son going by the moniker of baby doc was not the sharpest knife in the drawer it's very common that this is the case and it's primarily because the father scratched and clawed to make his way to the apex of power whereas the son is born into the lap of luxury and as a result does not have the skills and keenness to maintain that office and for that reason uh succession by heredity is not an intelligent thing it appear that queen victoria was quite the chess master by the turn of the 20th century most of queen victoria's grandchildren were ruling in other european countries King Edward VII would rule England for nine years after his mother, Queen Victoria's death in 1901. Edward passed away after several heart attacks in 1910, handing the crown to his second son, George V. King George V was actually never meant to become king, Damn. nor was he meant to marry his wife, Queen Mary of Teck. George was actually the spare to his eldest brother, Albert Victor, who unfortunately died a few weeks after his engagement to Mary. George ended up marrying... I wonder if he died in like natural causes because he looked pretty young you you feel me he might have been set up for that one i'm just saying he might have been set up my boy didn't put her whole name out here alexandria ocasio cortez good lord like why can't she just keep it simple and just say alex cortez J just for your boy one time homie said white british girls are average i gotta agree with you there i gotta agree with you there 
marrying his brother's fiance and taking the crown in 1910. During George V's reign, the monarchy was becoming hugely unpopular, so he began a campaign to get the working class back on his side. He began to meet farmers and industrial workers at their jobs and houses for photo opportunities, trying to appeal to the working class people. This tradition is carried on throughout generations, the royal family now calling it a walkabout. After King George's death in 1936, his eldest son Edward became king. Can you guys just tell me how that doesn't disgust you? They're trying to get the common people on their side by taking pictures. Just imagine they show up to your job at McDonald's. You in London trying to make these damn French fries. They didn't show up. You making a Big Mac. Hey, and they just put their arm around you and take a selfie with you for their own personal propaganda to look like they give a shit about your broke ass. That's wild. That is wild. And what's even wilder is that the average person buys into this. You heard an imbecile say that she's sad that the queen died because she saw the queen ride by on her yacht and she waved at the queen when she was 10 years old. Oh my goodness, idiocy knows no bounds. But somehow we're able to, you know, take these small tokens and be used by those in power who really don't care. They just really don't care. And with the price of this funeral, we're about to see how much they don't care. Edward VIII. Edward VIII didn't rule for long, as he was the first British king to abdicate from the throne in 1936, what? only 11 months after he succeeded the throne. He did it all for his girlfriend, the two-time American divorcee, Wallace Simpson. This man was a simp. Hold on. I found the history of simping. Hold on. The throne. He did it all for whoa this man is the first simp in his in simp history i was actually going to make a cartoon um I, I forgot what the what the whole cartoon was going to be but it was like trying to discover the the origins of simping it was going to be a cartoon it was going to start off with uh drake is simping right and then i appear out of thin air like voila and then i'm like drake bro you got to knock it off man you can't be simping like this i was like bro like simping goes back like to time immemorial and then i'm like here step into my time machine so then drake step into my time machine we get in the time machine and i set it back to biblical days you feel me then i show up and i'm next to uh joseph and mary you know who that is who's that okay go play with me uh and then we there with joseph and mary which is uh mary the virgin mary and then joseph the father of Jesus, but we know that he couldn't have been the father of Jesus because the Holy Father is supposed to be the father of Jesus. And it's right at that moment when she breaks the news to him and she says, Joseph, I'm pregnant. He's like, what? You pregnant? I ain't even hit. How are you pregnant? Who, who got you? I ain't even hit that. She's like, no, no, no. Calm down. Calm down. It's the immaculate conception. He like, what them words mean? Bitch, you know, I ain't went to but the fourth grade. What them words mean? She said, it's an immaculate conception. This baby, this is the baby Jesus. This is the child of God. You know, I'm a virgin. I'm the Virgin Mary. I'm still a virgin, but I'm pregnant. And he's like, oh, so you haven't had sex, which means you're a virgin, but you also pregnant. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. I believe that that's the origin of simping. Like that's the true original sin. You heard me? So I, I take him back in my time machine and then we get to observe the origins of simping and how it just destroyed mankind. And then this story was taught to millions and probably by now billions of human beings to believe hoes that are clearly lying. How are you a virgin, but you pregnant? Nah, ho, you clearly lying. Because there's been billions of births since then, and they all required some sex. Huh? So, yeah, I, I think I'm going to go ahead and make that, um, make that cartoon as necessary. The thing that trips me out, though, is like, one, wow, y'all really believe in these hoes. And y'all even making statue of these hoes, calling it the Virgin Mary, when we know damn well she wasn't a virgin. And then uh, Joseph just going to sit up there and let her keep saying that, and he going to stay with her. And then he should have knew it wasn't his baby because he was Jewish and the baby was black. Ah, carrying on. For his girlfriend. Oh no, the I forgot to, to roast this bastard. This man became the king and abdicated, which is to say gave up his role for a female? What? Ain't no cat that good. Ain't no cat on planet earth that good when I'm the king and I'm about to give that up for you. Stop it. That is true insanity. And I'm also trying to figure out like, did, was that necessary? Because um the redhead boy, he married a, an American who is not royal, and he ain't have to give up. Huh? Oh, he's not a king, so he can do what he want to do. 
Okay, maybe that was the case. And the worst thing about it is, again, this chick is just like, ah, I, she looked like she should have played in that movie Matilda. You feel me? Like, she is not that fire. Probably got some fire, though. Two-time American divorcee, Wallace Simpson. Wait, it doesn't what? sound... So she was divorced two times and you over here giving up the throne for her, my boy. She divorced not once, which is bad. Not twice, which is bad. But now she on her third marriage, which you use a fool, boy. And you know it's even worse because she's a two-time divorcee like way back during that era when people really didn't get divorced like that. That boy's a fool. Meghan Markle was a divorcee too. Oh, lying. Someone said in the chat, I just confirmed, yeah. Word? Yeah. These, American these British boys are dirtbags. They ain't learned a damn thing. Man, they need some of this ism. Somebody go ahead and send this over to the Royals. Tell them the big homie got some lessons for him. This is a pity. It's a pity. Before you start that again, Kevin's back again on Cash App and said, please consider roasting Cynthia G. She deserves it. People have been asking for that. Remind me to put up a poll. I'm going to put up a poll, see if she needs that in her life. Can you reach out to her, see if she want to debate? I don't know who she is, but people keep on saying she need this work. They keep saying she need the work. Shoot her a DM on IG or something. See if she want this work. No, see if she just want to have a, a conversation, interview, debate kind of situation. And if she don't, then we could go ahead and put her in a frying pan so bad now hey, but back in the Kevin. 1930s kings queens and heirs to the throne weren't allowed to marry divorced people because it was against their religion which ironically they were the head of after edward's abdication the crown was passed to his younger Yo, brother shout out. in order to emphasize continuity uh in case you guys didn't get that the reason he had to abdicate to marry this two-time divorce harlot is because it's against the religion of England to marry divorcees. And that's phenomenal. I like that. And they were also the head of the religion, which makes sense because a monarch is chosen by God. You are divinely selected to be a ruler. Now, God picking some ugly ass rulers in the UK, but what can you do? I mean, if God did it, it must be right, huh? Now, it's funny how now their religion, I guess, is just like irrelevant, huh? Like we don't even look at them as religious figures anymore or even moral figures for all that matters. And thank you, as I said to Kevin, because you got some people who don't click the like button, they don't uh, support, then you got guys like Kevin, he, he comes back and consistently supports, kind of pulling the, the weight of many men. And that's the nature of uh, human life. You got some strong men, you, you got a lot of weak people. Woody with his father and restore confidence in the monarchy, he changed his name to George when he succeeded the throne. King George VI was a nervous man with a stutter who was never meant to become king. Despite this, he ruled through some of Britain's darkest days with strength, and he united the nation during World War II countless times. Sadly, George VI was a chain smoker, and towards the end of his reign, his health had begun to deteriorate to the point that his eldest daughter, Elizabeth, began filling in for him at public events. Despite only being 25 years old, with two young children of her own at the time, Prince Charles and Princess Anne, the Yep, there she is. She busted. It's verified. She right here in her prime of life. She busted. It is ultra verified. Um, that was hella funny though. They said old oh boy was a he, he was a nervous man with a stutter and he was a chain smoker. Like, god damn. Like he had like zero things going for him. Then his health started declining. Yikes. Man, he was all bad. It's like he was blessed with everything in the world, right? He was blessed with favor from God. He was blessed with wealth. He was blessed with position, and he basically just tricked it all away on his low character. Hector said, Velvet. You dig? Kevin the future queen handled. Word. And said, Even Thanos sacrificed his beloved. Mm. What's that mean, though? I don't know. You got to elaborate. I'm not, I'm not in too deep with the Marvel trilogies or movies. Handled royal duties with poise and class. King George VI would pass away from lung cancer on the 6th of February, 1952, <laughs> aged just 56 years old. Boy At the time, Elizabeth was touring Kenya with her husband, Philip, on her way to Australia and New Zealand when she received the news of her father's death. She would rush back to Britain to claim the crown, and at 94, is both the longest-serving female head of state in world history and the world's oldest living monarch. Her husband, Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh, was born into the Greek royal family, having both German and Danish heritage. 
but he dropped his titles when he married the Queen. Just to prove the royals like to keep it in the family, the Queen and Philip are actually third cousins. Up oh, there you go. That's why they so damn ugly. Cause they they no for real. <laughs> they ugly. They got all these damn health issues. They keep it in the family. Cause, Cause yeah, they inbred. Wow, wow. I got some good looking cousins, but they ain't that good looking. They ain't that good looking to where I'm gonna go Kevin Gates on them. You dig? Okay. Alexander said, "Peace to the saints. Hope all is well. It is unfortunate that the queen has left us." I would find it interesting to see you being a king, King Marquette or King Saint. You dig? And, and you know, I'd, I'd be a magnanimous ruler. And I would be a ruler of the people. And I would return uh, leadership to the people upon my conclusion. I'm not about to be like, hey, my first son. <laughs> yeah, this lazy, dumb fuck who's grown up with every privilege. Let him rule. Nah, we ain't, we ain't rocking like that. Thanos thing Rex said basically he's saying Thanos sacrificed his daughter for the greater good in the Marvel movies. That's what's up. That's what's up. We got another busted one. Like, Brit, keep it real with me. Am I exaggerating or is this like wreckage after wreckage? You're not exaggerating. Okay, I just want good lord. This woman looked like she should be in a goddamn butcher shop cutting up Polish sausages. Like mad at everybody in line. Who's next? Like she didn't look like she had a badass attitude. Good lord, she looked like that person when you be on the airplane, you be waiting outside of the bathroom, and she come out of the bathroom, and you just look at her face like, oh, I don't want to go in there now. Oh my goodness, she's rich. She looked like that angry woman at the PTA that then came in and cussed everybody out, even though her. All right, I'm. Look, we carry it though. Thanks to Queen Victoria. Elizabeth and Philip would go on to have two more children, Andrew and Edward. Queen Elizabeth's oldest son and heir apparent, Prince Charles, famously married Lady Diana and had two children, William and Harry. After Diana's tragic death in 1997, Charles would remarry Camilla Parker Bowles, who took on the title Duchess of Cornwall. The Queen's four children would each go on to have two kids of their own, extending the royal family by eight grandchildren. These eight grandchildren have also been busy. A further eight great-grandchildren have been born with a ninth on the way. Oh, she was looking kind of black in that picture. What'd you think? <laughs> She's looking kind of... Whoa, what you start laughing for? She's the next a bunch of really white people. Is she looking kind of black in this picture? I ain't lying to you. And I know they didn't Photoshop this shit, too. I feel like British people are very, very white. Yeah, they white. I mean, white people are white. What you saying? Somebody put Diane as the best looking. She wasn't even one of them. She married in. You feel me? Children have also been busy. A further eight great-grandchildren have been born with a ninth on the way. The queen has certainly created a huge family, while at the same time trying to keep up the ideal family life that the public can look up to. Recently, though, that squeaky clean image has been shattered, especially after Prince Harry and Meghan's interview with Oprah. Although Harry and Meghan didn't say anything bad about the Queen and Philip, they do comment on Prince Charles, Prince William, and Kate. The Queen's recent statement doesn't reveal too much regarding how she feels about the interview, but it clearly tarnished her family's reputation. Only time will tell the damage that's been done. Since King George V, the British royal family... See, look, number one, you don't speak up on your family, you dig, and I always talk about loyalty. And that's why we had some people, there's a pedophile on the internet, and I want him taken down, you dig, in a real way, because I, I believe all chomos deserve death. But, you know, there's some people's like, Quet, you know, I, I listen to your stuff and I listen to his stuff. No, 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 don't listen to my stuff and his stuff. Go on that other side. We don't want you over here, because over here it's all loyalty. There ain't no halfway loyalty. It's 100% or it's 0%. You heard me? And furthermore, just side note, and I'm talking about old boy speaking up on his own family on Oprah. What kind of shit is that? But moreover, if your boy going to be the monarch, I'm going to show up and show out every time. I got to represent y'all, right? So it only makes sense that I'm dripped out. I'm dressing like the boy right here. You heard me? I don't care where I'm at. I could be at a goddamn swimming pool. I'm wearing this whole shit right here. I'm about to be dressed like uh, the redhead boy with these uh, pants on. Look at this man got his socks exposed and shit. Look at this boy. He got his legs crossed like a bra with his socks exposed. The socks ain't even the right color, and he got his skin exposed between the socks and the pants. That's just not classy, darling. I'm appalled. Let me give a little bit of advice to you gentlemen who like to look good. Uh, number one, get your ass some socks that come at least to the, the start of your knee, right? This man wearing ankle socks on Oprah, it's a damn shame. 
Furthermore, you think he have a couple goddamn pennies to rub together to get his ass a proper suit. Why his suit look like his spandex? That's not cool. Lastly, who in the hell made these raggedy ass shoes that he got on? Look like they made from donkey hide. Not appropriate. And lastly, it's daytime. It looked like it's springtime. Somebody tell this dumb black broad that she shouldn't be wearing black. I don't know. She just want to be black. Or she's like, you know, I'm going to be there. Oprah's going to be there. Oprah's black. We're doing it from a diverse audience. I'm going to wear black so they know I'm black. We know you're black. We've heard. You don't need to wear black in the spring. Everything's black, bright, beautiful, and green, love. Wear a light color, some yellow, some pastel. Baby, don't show up in black. It's not a funeral, you dumb broad. We ain't about to go to the club. Also, you need to match what he's wearing. He should wear the dominant color and you should wear the highlight color of what he's wearing. God damn it. I hope somebody pass on the message. Okay, we have Angela came in on Cash App. She sent $50. Baller alert. She said tuition, peace to the saints and lady saints. Peace to the saints and lady saints. The, the, the women showing up. That's what I like to see. Shout out to the lady saints. You did. Only time will tell the damage that's been done. Since King George V, the British royal family haven't really seen any drastic changes, other than the fact that they now use social media and are far more connected with the public than they ever used to be. In fact, Queen Elizabeth is the first monarch in British history to do live Zoom meetings. With a reign of over 69 years under her belt, I like this little Queen afro. Elizabeth II is the longest reigning monarch in history, beating her ancestors, her cousins, and all of her distant relatives throughout Europe. And while the number of beheadings, syphilis-related insanity, and challenges to the throne have dropped off over the years, the respect and admiration for the crown continue. A hey, shout out to um to old ladies, old ladies around the world. Old ladies happen to love me. Did I ever tell you that? Old ladies have a special I've place. Yeah, old ladies love me. I don't know what it is, but they love me. I think they just like they come from that era where they respect real men. You heard me, and when they feel that vibe, they just show love. But does every old lady have an afro? It don't even matter what race she is. She got an afro. It's crazy out here. Shout out to the Golden Girls. Carrying on. 300 years on. And that's all we have time for on today's video. We hope you learned. Cool. I'm going to give you guys a little bit of time to uh, get those likes up. You heard me. To go ahead and uh, send in your thoughts, questions, comments. And, uh, you know, if po people, if it's your will, I will carry on. I got a, another piece of education for you, which is. How rich is the royal family? I mean, it, it's an important question. Might need to re rename this live, huh? I can't think of a name that's appropriate. You think we need a thumbnail for it? Yeah. A thumbnail? Somebody DM me. They asked, when do we restock the backpack uh, briefcase? We won't be. That's why I be telling y'all, y'all got to get this stuff while it's there. The master Sun Tzu states that haste can be folly, but delay is never wise. Well, it appears to be the will that we wrap things up now. Let us end with our tradition, the creed of the assassin. Repeat after me with full conviction, knowing this is true of you, the creed of the assassin. I am going to be who I truly am because I am remarkable, and I'm going to strive every moment to show the greatest part of who I am. Until next time.